Our partners at the State House News Service keeping a close eye on the state of play on Beacon Hill. Watch to see if the battle over federal stimulus spending actually spurs House Senate negotiators to hammer out a budget deal compromise. And sports betting is still a long shot with the Senate leadership, but the Gaming Commission is launching a study into implementation nonetheless. So we learned this week that Charlie Baker and Marty Walsh are so close that Lauren Baker had to take the phone away from her husband on a Saturday night at 10 p.m. and tell Marty it was time for the boys to hang up. <laughs> now, could we see that ever happening with Michelle Wu, Rob? Sure. I mean, if she wants to, <laughs> why not? If she wants to take the, the Marty Walsh path of playing ball with Charlie Baker, muting criticism in both directions, then I think that relationship could develop. I don't think she wants to do that because I think she has a really different view than Charlie Baker of how things should run. Marianne? But her first meeting this week as mayor was with Charlie Baker, Baker at yeah. the State House. So I think you can do it without the 10 o'clock phone calls to <laughs> Lauren Baker. But for all the bromance between Baker and Walsh, they didn't do that much together. Yes, on COVID, Marty was really pushing that and, and that was to our advantage, but not that much done there. So uh, st speak, staying on the question about Marty Walsh, it's now out that he really still lives in Boston. A political piece says that he stays at the Capitol Hilton when he's in D.C., and but that it's not that often. What's the real takeaway here, Marianne? Well, the real talk all over Boston is that Marty Walsh wants to come back home to Boston and run for office, and that talk is coming from Marty Walsh. <laughs> so it's hard to imagine, you know, he, that he wants to come back here and run for an office. Everyone says it's governor, but now we have the UMass Amherst WCVB poll showing that Charlie Baker and Moore Healy only six points apart. Hard to see Marty Walsh getting in that race. The Steve Lynch congressional race, if they finally get rid of DeJoy, I don't know, that puts him back in D.C., not as a cabinet secretary, but a member of Congress, one of hundreds. So we shall see. Stay tuned. This just might be another exit strategy to a destination unknown. Uh, do you think it's that odd for the labor secretary to still be living in his hometown? Well, one, rents are really high in D.C. Uh, two, mayors of Boston never do well statewide running for office. Especially at the Capitol Hilton. Let's, let's touch on, on, on two quick points here before okay. we step aside. Number one, Bill Belichick, highest paid coach in professional sports at $18 million. Overpaid or underpaid? All those years when Tom Brady wasn't getting paid what he was worth and giving up his salary to get all those other players in, yep. and everybody thought Belichick was a magician and yep. said he was the Wizard of Oz. Yep. Overpaid. Overpaid. <laughs> well, Roger Goodell makes $60 million, okay? So I think <laughs> Belichick's a bargain. <laughs> $60 million. All right, let's go to best to worst. Marianne, let me start with you. Infrastructure week is the best week, best week, except Biden was in New Hampshire, not Massachusetts, and now we know why. Biden was in New Hampshire. Biden was also driving an electric vehicle yep. in Michigan. Yep. So we're not spending the money. Rob, actually, Joe Biden had the worst week. Uh, he tells us he cares about the environment, so he's giving big tax write-offs for electric vehicles. But that's wrong. He's actually only giving them to electric vehicles that are built by union labor. So if you have a Prius or a Tesla, you're out of luck. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.